unintentionally hurting your loved ones. Unintentionally inflicting pain upon yourself that you don't know is yet to, it's yet to come. The pain is deep and I'm not talking hurting others. I'm talking physically, not physically, I'm talking emotional, the mental anguish and the scarring you may do or endure while incarcerated. And of course, it's different at every prison, but mental anguish is not. The mentality of a man is deep, and the thoughts that go into most of our heads are so deep that most people can't explain it. And if you've spent any time in prison, the hurt is deep. So let's get into today's video. Nate G219 to help me back and better here. Hope everybody's doing great today. It's February 21st. It's Wednesday. I think it's the 21st. <clears throat> a little rain it's nasty outside but you know I get to bring up a video to you guys after this I'm gonna go get my daughter poor three-year-old's got an ear infection and she's in the middle of a movie so after the movie I'm gonna go pick her up try to keep her busy but it's also Ash Wednesday so she may go to church tonight and we'll debate on that see how she feels but anyways as you saw in the intro, the hurt. I'm not talking about physically hurting somebody. I'm not talking about <clears throat> causing pain to yourself. I'm talking about the mental pain and the, the trauma that you put yourself and your loved ones through when you do decide to take that road to hell. And Man, there's so many wrong turns you can take that take you straight to that same hell. It's ridiculous. There's only a couple couple paths that are, are the correct paths. And to take those paths while you're young is the wisest thing to do. So I'm going to dedicate this video and uh, hoping that a young man... <clears throat> that was following my path into drug addiction, partying, having fun, not giving a, you know, damn about anything except myself caused so much hurt. So as you know, <clears throat> I've been off of heroin February 20, or sorry, October 22nd, 2012. It's February right now, sorry. It's been just over 10, 10 and a half years. We're going on 10 and a half years. <clears throat> Part of that is due to incarceration. I'm sorry I'm all congested. There's a cold going around. It's cold, hot. It's Northwest Indiana. Mother nature's bipolar up here. Uh, Lake Michigan's got its own weather patterns and it'll be 40 degrees and then negative seven and then 72. And that can happen within 72 hours. It has. Check it. Anyways, a little stuffed up, a little groggy. But the hurt. The hurt. Okay, so first of all, when my addiction led me to go into prison for getting caught selling drugs, I got caught, like I said, plenty of times before. I'm going to say it again because my viewers are starting to grow. And please hit that like and subscribe. I gotta start remembering to say that because I'm trying to grow. Please help me grow. Help me get to 1,000 and then the next goal is 10,000 maybe. Right now I'm at 275 or something viewers. I mean, I'm not unhappy about that. I'm grateful every, for every single one of you. But I've got goals in life and I want to share my story and my life with you and part of it is hurt, it's anguish, it's, I mean, there's sadness, there's happiness, there's 
all walks of emotions that have involved my life of past addiction, current events, just everything, everything, everything I've been through. Like I said in my last two videos, which was a two-part video of how my first interactions with police kind of changed the course of my life. And then I said in a video, how I, I, don't, I don't remember exactly, I, I got my first felony. I did explain it in the last video. Right after I turned 18, I got a felony. I'm talking six days after I turned 18. I was caught with a firearm on school property. It was like uh, August 30th of 1999, which as many know, was four months and 10 days after the Columbine shooting. The Columbine shooting changed the course of the whole school system. So it made me look like a monster when I had an unloaded weapon in my car and somebody told on me it wasn't as bad Irregardless, <clears throat> it put me as a convicted felon forever. I had the opportunity to get off probation, but you know what? I was 19 and 20, and I had the mentality not of an adult. I was an idiot thinking they're not going to get me. I could beat the system, and I failed many more piss tests than I passed just because I wouldn't put a joint down, because I wouldn't quit smoking some weed. It's, it's, it's just a ridiculous thought. This is, you know, them child thoughts. And, you know, you live and learn. But, you know, did my first bid back in 01. Like I said, got out two days after the September 11th attack. And um, at, about six months later, got arrested for a joint thankfully got out of a lot of things because of that but <clears throat> that was 2002 I believe March was when I was arrested for that so about a year later that was complete probation was done one of my only satisfactory releases from probation but I had went in a few years without being arrested or charged with anything yeah, not charged or convicted of anything. There was a couple close calls um, because, you know, there were times I was dealing, de de dealing drugs. There was times I wasn't. And I'm not saying I was the best father figure, but I never neglected my children, child or children until I went to prison. I'm never saying I, I, I wasn't the greatest dad. I went to prison. I wasn't there. It's not a good dad. Wasn't a good role model. But what I was doing was providing for my family. And I was in the restaurant industry. I, I was just, I was also still partying. I, you know, had an addictive personality. And I, I was in a, relationship that would became very toxic for one another and as well as my son who's an amazing kid by the way love you son so proud of you man um <clears throat> but i'm gonna start with I'm, I'm gonna fast forward past a couple arrests because you know there was a couple owis that gave me a couple more felonies so when I was set up for dealing the small amount of drugs, like I said, for personal, I it was just, you know, basically get a bag of dope for free and get some gas. Um, I was set up by one Miguel Ramirez. I will always release his name. It's okay. Um, anyways, you know what, man? You saved my life, but you did take a lot away and cause a lot of hurt unforeseen hurt I mean but you probably didn't care regardless anyways get back into it all right October 23rd of 2012 I was hauled off by a SWAT team they blocked off the roads the house just I, I thought somebody was coming over to grab a can of pop and 
which she was, which was my son's mother. And she had called, I was on the phone with another friend when my ex-wife had buzzed in. She wanted to come grab a can of pop while she saw her son for five minutes on her way home because some, my son had just started staying with me. And um, not five minutes later, as I'm on the phone with the other girl, um, I hear boom, boom, boom. I said, damn, I said, why is she knocking like the damn police? Because I, I thought it was my ex-wife. I open the door and I get snatched out of my house at my parents' house. And all I can do is set the phone down, which is still wide open. And um, shout out to my friend. I'm not going to say your name. If you ever see this, you know who you are. Actually, her, her name's Crystal. She was just a friend of mine. Met her at a gas station. Knew her older brother. Um, but she was on the phone hearing my son who was, this was in 2012, so he was 11? Yeah, 11 years old. He was 11 years old, seeing, you know, 10, 15 cops with AR-15s and pistols holding me down to the ground, cuffing me. Not a clue what's going on, you know. Um wouldn't even let me say goodbye to my screaming and crying son. For one, some reason, I want to say, let's see, he's 19 now. Oh, no, so he would have been seven or eight years old. I don't know what the hell I'm thinking. Um, I, mean, I don't remember exactly how old he was. I don't know. I don't know exactly. He was young. He was a young man. Between 8 and 10. I don't know. I went away in 2012, but I want to say he was born in 03 right now. He's 19. Going to be 20. He was born in 03. Yeah, I had to think of what year it was. Sorry, ADD. He's going to be 20. I went away in 012. So, yeah, I just I felt like he was younger. But, I mean, and unfortunately, a few months later, his, his mother was incarcerated. I'm not going to get into that. Um, unless she tells me I can, I'm not going to release any names or anything, but my son, the trauma that that kid went through because of me is going to forever scar him, but grateful, so grateful for my parents. They, uh, they, they took guardianship of him and they raised him as he was on his, their own and. <clears throat> did things better than they did with me. They learned their lessons. Um, he's now running track and field, or track down at a pretty decent private school. And I, it's just amazing to see. And then my 11 year old, it's just amazing to see her. Granted, different, from a different girl, this is much, many years, this is before prison, the, my daughter's first birthday was a week before I went to prison too. So I was using drugs. I, it was just a bad, bad time in the life. So I have a one-year-old daughter and I have a son. I was nine. He was nine because he's eight years older than her. Nine going on ten. He'd have been ten the next year. Yes. So... It's very, very traumatizing for him to see me go away and then his mother to go away a few months later and what he had to go through. <clears throat> then, I mean, my hurt, I caused this myself. It doesn't make it any less hurtful. 
Father's Day of 2013, my grandmother passed away. Granted, I did know that she was not doing great before I had went away. I want to say she had pancreatic cancer. Um, I, I'm pretty sure that's what it was. And she told me she was going to go, but she had been a nurse her whole life. And, you know, old school people don't sugarcoat much. So she had prepared me, but you know what? Not being able to say my goodbyes was is hard. It's hard. It's a hard thing to do. And that that hurt deep, but I mean I I mean I said goodbye by my own way and there's gonna be a day I'm gonna make it out to Pennsylvania and see she's buried at a church's garden. Her ashes are spread throughout the garden so I will go see that along with my grandfather who was a World War II veteran both my grandfathers were um, I got their flags up up in my living room and we get finished doing the remodel uh, things will be on display you guys will see some things but again back to the hurt my mother you know, to hear your mother say she's not happy you're in jail, but she's happy to know that you're safe and you're going to be alive. At least in their head, at least in the jail, she wasn't worried about it. Now, where I had ended up, I mean, there wasn't a guarantee I was going to ever make another phone call again. Once I hung up that phone, there wasn't a guarantee I was going to be able to take another breath. I could have been stabbed to death that second. But, gratefully, by the grace of God, that none of that ever happened. Um, but the anguish I caused her and the disappointment I've caused my family, my entire family. I am the blackest of all black sheep of all family because we've got... I've got family members that, uh, very, very well-off family members. And I'm not going to get into financial things, but, like, what I make a year isn't going to cover the garages. <laughs> I mean, some of them, California, just, I mean... I have one that lives in the Home Alone movie area. You know those houses. Okay, so just to give you an idea. Um, I obviously didn't do that. Um, I, I was the runt of the litter. And uh, granted, I was an only child. And yeah, I was probably spoiled a little bit. I was a mama's boy, but man, I love my mom. God rest her soul. I miss her. And... Um, here's another big hurt, like, for me personally, not that I caused, <clears throat> that, um, this one actually was, was a clerical error, but it was such a deep clerical error that I was supposed to be released on September 24th because of this early release date thing. Well, something happened in the paperwork, and I was not released until September 28th. I know that four days is not long, especially after you've served three years. But on September 26th was my mom's birthday, and as well as a funeral. So I didn't know this at the time. This was going to be my mother's last birthday. Because on... Well, the death certificate says December 29th. December 28th, my mother passed away in my arms. You know, I lost all that time, and I I got 90 days. I am so grateful for the 90 days. I'm not going to talk too much about that because, you know, I, I'm still, well, I'll forever be mentally messed up from the damage I've caused throughout my addiction and my past. Um, and all the roads that led me to that hell. I took so many of them. Like, I've taken U-turns and went right back down the roads of hell. It's, it's freaking ridiculous, the damage I caused in my past. 
And, you know, I thank my mom, this guy, every day that, that I am where I am. I mean, God, God help me to get, get a little better, please. By the way, hit that like and subscribe, please. But anyways, back to the hurt. Okay, again, like I said, I had a daughter that was one. She turned one a week before I went away. Nine days before I went away. So, I was gone for three years. I didn't see her once. I watched her grow up in pictures. I wrote letters, of course. But I was, I mean, she was very young. Obviously, she's not able to write me letters in return. And never once got a letter in return. Um, but she did see pictures. She knew who I was. And to now to now now mine and her relationship is so great i love you arabella so much you're such a great little girl so amazing i'm just so grateful to be your dad um and i know you watch this so but i know you're, i've i've hurt you and i'm very sorry for that and my goal is to never do that again and i think you know that and uh so I watched her grow up through pictures. And then there was times we weren't able to see each other for whatever reasons. But now, you know, we see each other every weekend. I can't wait till Friday. If Friday comes, I leave work. I'm going to go pick you up and pick her up. And, uh, yeah, we're going to have the weekend together. So, but I did cause her a lot of hurt. I caused her mother a lot of hurt, which, you know, I, I can't take back. All I can do is apologize and, you know, try to change the future and create something for the future. Because my past, my past is my past and there's nothing I can do except say I've grown and I've become a better man from it. But back again to the hurt, my father... You know, like I said, I'm the runt of the entire family. Uh, I'm the only child, for one. All my cousins, uh, you know, nobody's gotten in any trouble if they have no real trouble. So, I always felt as a disappointment. And, you know, I'm sure I was a disappointment. And, you know, I hope at least where I am now that I'm not as at least as much anymore as I used to be. I mean, I can't be. There's no way. But there was a point in time that I was a disappointment, I'm sure. And for that, I mean, I'm sorry for, for hurting my father, hurting, hurting everybody that I've hurt. My friends. I've lost friends that I'll never get back. You know who you are if you watch. Um friends that are irreplaceable things that my stupid addiction and then not to add the people in the gangbanging that started things got crazy and i'm not going to even get into that right now i'm just talking about the hurt from going to prison that i've caused people listen guys it's nothing that you want to do it's nothing that you want to experience. The hurt that you cause yourself is one thing, but the hurt that you cause your others is another. Hearing my son scream and cry, Daddy, Daddy, please, can I love I love you. Can I say bye to my son? All I did was drag me to the car. I didn't even know what I was going for. You would have thought I murdered somebody. They did all this for a $20 bag of dope. Wouldn't even let me say goodbye to my screaming son while my whole family's sitting there watching. Another one that hurt. This this one was a deep one. I'm a very, very big animal lover. Those of you that know me, you know this. Um, I had a dog that was beagle that when I went away, passed away. I was in segregation. I called home off the cell phone. I told you that one of those guys, T.Y. or S.B., 
uh, somebody called off that phone saying some things and I um, what the hell was I saying um, oh I called home and I found out my dog passed away and one thing I had looked to more than anything was you know the howl of the beagle when, when they get exp excited anything oh, roar, 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 roar. my other one kind of looked at me crazy I got a Kunha mix 9 grass salmon in a short if you really watch me but uh, I'll introduce him some more yeah I'm talking about you diesel um It's that was such a hurtful thing to know I would never see that dog again. Still makes me want to cry. I remember going to my cell. Thankfully, we had single man cells because I wanted to cry. <laughs> Look who's saying hello. Come here, bud. You can come say bye. You can come say bye to everybody. Hey, look at the camera. Look, say cheese. Say hi, I'm Diesel. My wife wanted a girl dog, or a boy dog, because, you know, boy dogs usually attach to girls, but... I don't know, what do you think? Nah, it's my boy. But hey, guys, it's another one. Episode for ya, Nate G219. You know it, if they ain't hating it, you ain't making it.